And the, the big questions, I mean, if, if you think about tipping points, what, what are people most concerned about? Uh, really, it has to do with the big ice sheets. So the uh, Greenland ice sheet, the West Antarctic ice sheet, and the fear is that if you, especially with the West Antarctic ice sheet, because it's literally a lot of it's already under the sea, so if it get, starts getting a crack under it where you've got liquid water, you can actually very quickly get the whole thing sloughing off. That's a tipping point, right? If that happens, um, there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, changes will happen very, very quickly. Sea level will rise very quickly. And there's you know, really no turning back. It'll be thousands or millions of years before the Earth kind of readjusts itself after an event like that. Um, as a biologist, I'm very worried about the tundra uh, becoming um, unfrozen. So while it used to be that you'd get carbon sucked up in the summertime, and then in the winter everything dies and it just goes into this nice bank, carbon bank. Now in the wintertime you're getting decomposition because it's not no longer totally frozen, it's no longer totally waterlogged. And the sucking up in the summertime is not enough to counteract the decomposition in the wintertime. And so there are areas that are now the tundra, instead of being a carbon sink, has become a carbon source. If that process keeps accelerating, that could be another tipping point because that would release just, we're starting to see small releases of carbon. If we get a lot more warming and melting and drying of the permafrost, we can see suddenly huge releases of carbon very, very rapidly. And again, that would lead to an incredibly rapid shift in the climate regime. So there are sort of glacial tipping points and biological tipping points that people are very concerned about. If we do nothing, we certainly will lose a lot of biodiversity. That's my own field. But we're also going to lose all the coastal cities. A lot of areas will become unlivable. You know, they'll become Sahara Desert's equivalent because people simply won't be able to survive there. Agriculture will change dramatically. And in most cases, uh, we will not be able to grow things in areas that we consider bread baskets now. So these are not tiny changes, and yet the kind of changes we need to make to prevent that are relatively small, I mean, in my mind.